Lift up your eyes and look for Him Jesus the coming Savior King Born to redeem the world from sin Bringing His peace to all Thank you for joining us again as we continue to spend a bit of time in Matthew 2, uh, thinking around some of the themes around Epiphany. Yesterday we thought about Herod, um, and perhaps we thought about him as the, the token evil person in the Christmas story. Herod was the one who thought nothing of doing away with anyone in his way, anyone who was a threat. Herod was per prepared to kill his wife, his children, certainly to wipe out infants across a region um, that would have caused him no remorse. But hidden in this story, or at least for me, I hadn't noticed them before, are another cast. They didn't wield the, store, the, the sword, killing the innocents. They didn't send the soldiers out on their grisly mission. But they also played their part as accomplices to Herod's evil intent. We're going to reread yesterday's passage again. We're going to focus on the role of the chief priests and teachers of the law. So Matthew 2, 1 to 8. Matthew 2, 1 to 8. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem. And they asked, where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly, found out from them the exact time the star had appeared, and he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. King Herod and all Jerusalem were disturbed. Well, I think we can assume that um, those who were disturbed were those who were in positions of power. Those in power rarely welcomed something coming that could threaten the equilibrium, something that could put them in danger of losing their positions, their wealth, their influence, their prestige. I'm not sure the ordinary drowned, downtrodden men and women of Jerusalem would have been so disturbed. For them, it might have been welcome news. We can see how ordinary men and women in Israel responded in Luke's gospel. Have a look at the songs of Zechariah and Mary and the reactions of Simeon and Anna when they met Jesus. These men and women were longing that God would shake things up. But like I said, in the power mix advising Herod are the chief priests and the teachers of the law. These people who will feature um, to a greater, larger extent in the rest of the Gospels as Jesus grows up. These people who should have been God's representatives on earth, the people who should have been bringing people and God together, the people who should have been most eagerly waiting and looking for the signs of the coming Messiah. These religious experts tell Herod where the Messiah is to be born. Think about that. They tell this dangerous, volatile, megalomaniac where According to Jewish prophecy, he can find this new king of the Jews. It's not a great move on their part, is it? Not only that, there's no mention of, of, of these men, these learned, studied, uh, so-called followers of God, trying to seek out this new king, which their own understanding of the scriptures tells them will be born in Bethlehem. It's just a five-mile trip from where they are in Jerusalem. Surely, if there was a chance that this was their long-expected saviour, shouldn't they have gone to find out? And of course, on the other hand, we have these magi 
foreigners from the east, making their long and dangerous journey to worship this new king. And it seems the religious elite, those who should have been even more excited, can't be bothered, stay put, too scared, I don't know which. They definitely stay in Jerusalem away, ensuring they remain in the good books of Herod. In effect, they're choosing to collude with Herod. They were not prepared to rock the boat to upset their peace and their comfort. They were so busy looking to their own interests, they missed out on the most amazing thing that could ever have happened in their faith. In John's Gospel, chapter 1, we read this, verse 11. John writes, He, was Jesus, came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent or of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. It's a challenge to us because we would be seen as religious people. We are people who know the facts, have ticked many of the boxes of faith. So the question comes to us as we look at all that was going on in Herod's court. How do we respond when faced with a situation where we can act or remain silent? When we can collude with darkness or stand up to the light? Are we prepared to sacrifice our comfort and our privilege in our service and worship of Jesus? Or are we afraid of the cost, the consequences of being faithful to Jesus in all that lies ahead of us? It's a big challenge, isn't it? Big challenge for us at the beginning of another unknown year, 2022. Let me pray for us. Father, we pray that as we look out on this year, that we might be men and women of courage. We might know when to speak out and when to stand up. We might be willing to sacrifice comfort and safety for you. And we might be wholeheartedly for you and your kingdom during this year. Help us, we pray. Help our faith and our courage, we pray. Amen. May God bless us.